Oh, wanna watch me eat lunch? <laughs> hey, Sherry. Close, close it while you chew. Yeah. Hey, Sherry. Ashley's being I like how you two are twinsies today. You got your, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, you're frozen. <laughs> well, if it happens to me, don't no judging. I don't know. I don't know. I can't fix the weird faces, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right? They just kind of happen. <laughs> Blame it on the frozen screen, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I like how your cute matchy shirts today. You got the camo green going on. What is up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Have even planned. Yeah. We're kind of connected, you know, we're just kind of think. This happens. <laughs> it happens with my daughters too. We come to the office and we're in the same, same Like club. literally <laughs> the same outfit. <laughs> All happens the time. a lot. Okay, you guys don't want to hear about that. <laughs> no. So let's get started. Um, thanks for coming in, guys. Uh, these two, I love these Tuesday trainings. There's always a variety of topics. You never know what you're going to get. And um, we wanted Maylee for a while, and we were on a Zoom call, I don't know, a week or two ago, I can't remember how long ago, and the opportunity presented her, ourselves, and we jumped on it, so we're excited to have her. Maylee's got investing background, she's owned a brokerage, I could go on and on about her accomplishments, coaching, presenting, um, the reason we wanted her on the call is because she knows how to train people. She has good things to share. So we're excited to have her. And we were talking a little bit about, you know, scripts and different things. And she says, well, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. <laughs> so there's not necessarily one specific uh, topic that I'm aware of. Um, we're in for a treat, though. You have anything to add? She yeah. looks really good frozen. She, she almost looks like a Barbie right now. <laughs> she knows how to free. Hey. I'm like, you're Frozen too. Oh, so you could you not even hear me? <laughs> I'm just from Janet. Is it? Is it? No, I didn't actually. But I, we're good now. Give me one second. Let me just make sure the just talk for once. Let me make sure that there's no bad connection. Just I don't want to okay. be like this the whole time. So one thing. Okay. No, it, it, it's not all right. We, we are really good so we're excited. We're super excited to have Maylee um, and her energy and and excitement and passion for what she does. I think she has a lot to add um, for all of us. And so um, super happy to have her. Wish she was here in person, but uh, not so lucky. <laughs> yeah, in case it sounds really loud in here, um, we had a little team meeting going on. So we have a couple of people here. So me and Lynn aren't really casting our voices. Uh, there's a few in the room, just so you know. Um, so yeah, we're excited. So. Um, Turn it over to Maylee. Let's do it. Let's get this done. I like it. Let's dive right in. All right. So I'm going to be sharing my screen because I have a presentation for you guys. Hopefully it's helpful. And uh, more so than anything, I just wanted to kind of touch base on the aspects of how, uh, you know, just positioning yourself in the market as an agent is the most important part because unfortunately, what you don't know is what the other person's thinking most of the time. The goal though, right, with, with everything that we do as a salesman, because I have considered myself a master salesman, and most people should. If you are an agent and or wanting to become an agent, then, <laughs> then you need to recognize you need to become the greatest salesman. That is your job. That is our job to make a good experience for our customers and our clients. And so often than not, right, people who jump on our teams or I talk to a lot of agents and they go, oh, well, I'm a really horrible salesman. Well, then why are you an agent? Like just, you know, I'm just pausing there for a second because as though we don't want to be salesy, you're right, right? We don't want to be salesy. That's horrible. But I want to show you how today, maybe to open up your eyes to what really being a salesman means. Because in the past, if you think about it, and you've been, you know, sold something before, but you get done and it was an amazing experience and you had a great time. You think, wow, gosh, that was such a, you know, that was a really great experience. Not once did you think, wow, that person was a really, like really salesy. You just thought that was a good salesman, right? That was a really good person in my life. I'm glad I met them. And you go back to them all the time for business, repetitive business. And it's because you enjoyed your experience. So more so than anything, I do want to teach you about selling and how to position yourself so you don't feel like you're a salesy person, but also a saleswoman, a saleswoman or a salesman, but you need to become an expert salesperson in order to jumpstart your business, in order to take your business to the next level. And we're going to just dive right in here. So hopefully this is going to be super fun for you guys. I'm going to have a good time. So we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. 
Hey, and Maylee, is it okay for people to uh, unmute themselves and ask questions? Please, yes. Or you want to wait till the end? No, absolutely. I want everyone to participate. It's going to be a good time here. Let's see why. All of a sudden, it was working earlier. And can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Does it say Manchester Investor Secrets? No, actually, you're frozen or still having some connectivity issues. Ugh. Okay, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> you might have shared the wrong screen because it didn't show up right now. Let's see. I see the tab, though, but the slide's not pulling up. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we Loading go. Yeah. I don't know. There we Perfect. go. <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump right in here. Hopefully everyone can see this. And if it gets frozen, just chime in, let me know so I can kind of pause. I can hear you just fine when I'm frozen, it sounds like, but we'll just kind of kick this off. So uh, how to get your clients to say yes, right? That is the biggest question of all is to position yourself so that you feel really good about you know, yourself too, when you leave a client, because the last thing you want is be like, oh man, I totally blew it. Right. And you're going to get that. You're going to get that all the time. But, uh, the more you practice, the more you, you know, uh, use these skills that I'm going to be teaching you today, definitely the better off you're going to feel about yourself just overall, um, and be able to have some fun with practicing this. So this is going to be activities. You're going to be able to practice all the time on your wife, on your husband, right. On your kids. Like these are just really fun things for you guys to have some fun with. So how to get the most out of this. Guys, honestly, we only have you know less than an hour now. So put your phones on silent. Let's get this room quiet. Make sure you are free for the next 30 to 45 minutes. And we're going to you know have some fun. So pay attention here. So a little bit about myself. I'm Maylee Merrill Nelson, who was recently married just almost a year ago. Uh, I am the CEO of Manchester Real Estate. I do between five and seven fix and flips at a time. I know that Jeff just recently you know, said that. I've never spent a single dollar on any of my own deals. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's crazy how many deals we are. We're on our like 60 second deal as of this week. So pretty awesome as far as the fix and flip world. Uh, my husband and I own multiple rental properties across the nation, very much so like Jeff and, and Lynn here. And you know, this is why we joined. This is why we are here. This is why we're excited to be a part of their network and to uh, just feel like we're at home. This has just been such a fun opportunity for us. Uh, I have been the number one door knocker slash salesman in the nation for multiple years. And I was a alarm salesman and then I was a seller and I owned a seller division in California for five years. So I am a master door knocker and I'm a master of getting over people's concerns. And there's just a few tricks that I learned up my sleeve along the way of hearing no all the time, right? Like hearing no, 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 no. And that repetition of no teaches you that it's okay. And so we're going to dive into a little bit of why no is just fine, right? Just getting you to the next level. But one thing that I did learn early on in my career is the secret to success is to not keep success a secret. So what I mean by that is so, you know, so often people go, why are you sharing your talents? Why are you sharing your skills? Why are you telling people how you do all these things? Why would I not? And the reason why I love, you know, what we do and what Jeff and Lynn do and uh, and on our EXP team is specifically because we share everything, right? Rather than hoarding all of these good goodies that we have, we let everyone, all these Zoom calls are for you guys and for me too. I jump on and listen to learn how to position ourselves better in the marketplace to become a better individual naturally, but also in uh, the sales arena for a, as to be an agent. Because if you're not constantly learning new things and new tricks up your sleeves, then you're losing, right? You're constantly losing. So we've got to step it up. We always have to uh, find a way to, you know, inspire ourselves. I know Lynn and I were talking about that last week, right? We got to inspire ourselves every day because the world is so not inspiring, unfortunately, right now. It's just a crazy place. And so we have to take it upon ourselves to inspire each other. So these are just some fun things I wanted to share. I teach all across the nation uh, and top, you know, door knocking and different types of things. But I wanted to share a, a, something a little bit more personal about me that a lot of you might not know. Uh, so this picture actually, can you see it or can you see just make my cute little, we can probably see here. Yeah, we can see it, the we transaction it. treadmill. And okay, there yeah. we go. So 
pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so this picture hopefully says a thousand words, right? But uh, on, I was actually in a wheelchair for nine months. This picture was taken about four years ago. And I was running this very large solar company, knocking doors. I had 42 offices across all of California. And I was a divisional and I taught people exactly what to do and how to do it and how to overcome objections. And unfortunately, I was walking down the street with one of my guys that I was training and I stepped off the curb really weird. And overnight, my left leg actually went paralyzed. And so I was, from that moment, nine months later, they had no answers for me. They had no idea what was wrong with me. I was just this young kid. They thought, you know, that Alston just had some type of seizure or some kind of crazy um, spell and they had no answers for me. So you could imagine my entire career that I had based on uh, for my cell scales and everything that I was doing, all of a sudden was ripped out from under me and I could no longer do these things. Uh, during that time, I, we actually foreclosed on my house. We lost everything because we were running a large giant company and was zero. I was the breadwinner at the time. I had retired my husband for four years. So it just won't, <laughs> we just folded, everything folded. But because of that, it definitely enabled me to, right? All things happen for a reason, right? This isn't a sad story. I can walk down, I'm good, right? You saw me walk out of here. Uh, but it definitely enabled me to recognize what was important to me, recognize that, uh, that I needed to be able to have a passive income, something that no matter what, whether I was walking, whether I was dead, right? Or alive, or I was on vacation, or my kids are sick, no matter what's going on, I needed to be able to position myself so that I can make that residual mailbox money they talk about, right? So that uh, no matter what my kids were taking care of, no matter what my family was taking care of. And so I searched for real estate because I always wanted to do some type of real estate. And a lot of you probably on here and, and people that will be jumping on later, but uh, got into real estate and became a real estate agent because they thought that that was going to get them closer to the investing world. Well, unbeknownst to a lot of us, right? You get to be an agent, you go, shoot, I'm nowhere closer to becoming an investor than I was when I was just, you know, at my nine to five traditional job. And that's just because we get sucked into this rat race of the transaction treadmill, which is why I have this on the screen, is because we are now on call 24 seven, nine to midnight, you know, every day, trying to get people to say yes to us, right? And trying to hustle on the grind. So I want to try and eliminate some of that for you guys today so that you guys can position yourself a little bit cleaner in the marketplace so that people are searching for you rather than you having to just run after them. Also to create more of a residual situation so that you're not just running around with your head cut off, feeling like you're, you know, going to die and you're living, right? You have to have an abundant mindset here. We got to have fun in life or why are we here in the first place? <laughs> so uh, that's, that's the story. I, I definitely, from this picture here, this was right after the recovery. So you can see my tiny little leg. My left leg is like this big. Uh, I still have a ton of ner nerve damage, but it's all good. Life is great. I had back surgery and, uh, you know, $80,000 later, we're good to go. <laughs> so um, I think that as we progress in our lives, we forget a few things. So we forget that um, we can dream right? We forget that we can imagine anything and anything that we want, everything, right? So take a second and, and, and walk with me here. We're going to talk about how you can imagine. How. So take a walk down this memory lane with me here. Have a residual money, mailbox money to take care of yourself. Constantly doing five to 10 real estate transactions per month based on referrals only, right? We all need to be like Lynn and uh, <laughs> and Jeff here, have the time and money to travel, spend time with family and escape the paycheck to paycheck life. Finally, get off that transaction treadmill. That's what I want for you. I know that's what all of us that are team leaders here, that's what we want for you. And we can do it. We just need to dive in and do this together. So we're going to get you yeah, some secrets here. So today I have three secrets for you. Secret number one, why agents who know this become so successful and what drives to make their different personalities. So we're gonna talk some about personalities. Now I'm not gonna do, I mean, there's 5,000 different personality traits that we can do, right? Like all sorts of different tests that people have. Um, but I found that there's a really quick trick to, to getting people to understand what where they're at and I can figure out uh, what they need really quickly. So we're gonna talk about that. Secret number two, how to position yourself to get a yes with every client. We're gonna talk about that because we're gonna bring up concerns first and we'll dive a lot into that. Secret number three, People don't like to be sold, right? We talked about that. They don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. 
right? I mean, how many Amazon packages do you have flying in your, <laughs> in your house right now, right? You love to buy. People love to buy. The problem is, is that you don't want to be sold, right? You want it to be your idea. Everyone does. You're no different than me, right? Everyone wants it to be uh, their idea. So we're going to, we're going to go through this. So the first and foremost, what we're going to talk about is secret number one. Now, all of these secrets are really important, but I feel like this one's a really easy one to start practicing and just have some fun with. And uh, I know my husband and I, we actually, every time we meet somebody and we start asking them questions, actually in my phone, when I save their contact, I'll actually decide what drive system they are. And I'll save it in my phone so that when, I, when they call me or a client calls me or a friend calls me or whatever it might be, I know exactly what type of personality they are so I can immediately connect with them, right? I don't have to waste time. I don't have to try and bridge the gap or shoot the shit or whatever, right? Like I could just dive in and be like, hey, what's up, right? Like, let's have some fun. So knowing people's behaviors, knowing how they're going to react to you and, and, and obviously having excitement because Zig Ziglar said, right? There's no better transaction. There's no better sales transaction than just excitement. So be excited. That's, that's it, right? So we're going to have some fun with this drive. Now drive stands for uh, a couple different things, but before that, we're going to play a little game. Okay. So imagine real quick with me that you and me, we're going to play a game, just you and me personally. Okay. We're going to play and we're going to play Monopoly. You don't know how to play and you've never played this game. But I've played this game and I've won a lot. And we're going to sit down together and maybe pour a glass of wine. I don't know. We're going to have some fun. And I'm going to tell you to pick a character. I pick the hat because well, I always pick the top hat. And you pick the dog. Well, you know, you roll the dice and here we go. I go, I land, I pick my card, I play, and then you play. All of a sudden, what's going to happen if you don't know any rules? I haven't given you any bearing whatsoever. Who do you think is going to win this game? The one that knows the rules. I'm going to win, right? All the time, every time. <laughs> I want to win, right? That's just what happens. So if that's the case, then why do we keep playing a game, which is our life, right? We're playing Monopoly, real life Monopoly as agents, right? Why do we keep playing a game that you don't know the rules to? So that's what I want to talk about more so. And we're going to, this is just kind of a teaser little training, but we have so many more trainings we're going to dive into. So much more, so much fun. I can't wait to just keep hanging out with the merchants uh, and our team and just keep going. So D for, so drive, if you remember on the full spectrum was, so D is for dr the first part of drive. Okay. So if you're talking to your clients and you immediately start asking questions about who they are, right? Relationship. You always ask, you know, just questions to figure out who they are. Do you like nice cars? Do you like vacations? Do you like dreaming about traveling? Do you, do you value time more than anything else, right? Do you, do you need to be with your family and, and travel? If travel keeps coming up or they have pictures all over their house of travel, of travel, travel, guess what? They are a director. They are a director. And their hot buttons and their things that are going to motivate them to buy are going to be geared around them being able to do what they want by traveling, having experiences. So they're the experienced people. Okay. So I'm going to burn through these quickly. We don't have a ton of time here. So uh, we can come back to them and, and have some fun there if you have any questions. The next one is a relator. Do you prefer to hang out in crowds? Do you think of others before yourself? Do you love to have like charity events and, and bring a bunch of people in and, and care for them and, and cherish those relationships? If you are a relationship person and you value relationships above all else, that's how you're gonna get somebody to make a decision or move or say yes, is by positioning it in a way that gets gonna be like, oh, you mean I can be a part of something bigger than myself? I can be a part of an event? I can go hang out with people. I can maybe uh, be the person that's in charge of getting everyone together, right? Those are the things, a lot of times the, the behind the scenes people though. And so you can kind of pull those out as we go. And there's, there's a little trick at the end. We can play a little game uh, that we have a drive game that we can play. And that's really fun too. So we can definitely have some fun to pick out each one of your guys' drive system. The next one is intellect. Do you need, right? Do you know all the details before you make a decision? Do you have to have decisions, right? Do you have to look at the back office of something? If somebody's looking at a house, do they have to show up to the house? Do they have to open up the furnace? Do they have to, you know, open up the mechanical box and look at all the details? Are you the detail person? Are you, or is your client the detail person, right? I have a hard time with intellects. Now it's hilarious because my best friend that's also online here, Jana, she's quite the intellect, which she's kind of a mixture, which is great, right? But 
but it's a great mixture. And if you can learn how to get along with somebody that's opposite of you, it's fantastic because you have somebody that's by you all the time that is bringing in different um, relationship capital to, to a, a friendship and or to a partnership, right? So learning who people are when you're talking to them and recognizing that they might not give two craps about what you're saying <laughs> unless you can hit what, how they need to be talked to. So if I start talking to them about, to Jana, right, about all these other amazing things about how we're going to go, you know, uh, like get right to the point and, you know, we're going to go traveling and do all these things. And she's like, okay, yeah, but what time and when are we leaving and what date? And, you know, she needs to know all the details. She's organized, right? I'm like, oh yeah, we'll just figure it out when we get there, right? <laughs> that's me. Ah, we'll just wing it, right? No, that's, you know, but it's so great to have those people in place. So knowing the person that you're talking to or as a client is super helpful because if you're out on the doorstep or talking to a customer or, or a client, right? And they're saying to you, oh, well, but I need to see the contract. I need to see the contract. And they keep getting hung up on the contract. Who do you think they are? Intellect. You've got to, you can't pat, you can't just push it aside. You can't just like forget that it's even there or trying to ignore it. No, bring it up first. If you know they're an intellect, you've got to tackle this beast way before they can start having concerns. Because if you don't, you'll lose your client, you'll lose your customer. And that's what we're trying to fix here, right? So definitely position yourself. The intellect is definitely one of the hardest uh, to get over because they will go through all the details. They will sit in front of you sometimes and actually read the entire contract with you. They're like, what? Why are you reading the contract? <laughs> it's like design, right? But no, that's what they need. And that's okay. That's a beautiful thing. That's who they are. And that's who, you know, we need to represent in how we're going to serve them. So moving forward, validator. Now, I'm a validator, if y'all didn't know yet. <laughs> so do you need praise? Do you need awards? Do you need recognition for your efforts? Do you care about what people think? Now, I always say, oh, I don't care what people think. The truth is, I totally do. I totally do. And as much as I like to say I don't care at all, I definitely do, right? A lot of things that I do. I have nice cars, not because I'm a director, but because I'm a validator. I want people to be like, oh yeah, she's got a nice car. <laughs> Right? Like I totally am. I'm definitely a validator. Now, uh, so many people are a mixture, right? And you just kind of understand what they are. But when you start asking questions, if something's going to motivate them to do something is what they are. So the one thing, right? If you told them, Hey, if you could, if you're going to get an award, if you do this and they do it, they're a validator, right? Figure out the person that you're talking to. If somebody, if you're talking to a client and they're like, oh my gosh, like I, you know, I just need this and I want this type of house. Well, why do you want that type of house? Why? What, what's it for, right? Do you need this glorious house to show off who you are? Like to be like, oh, look at me, look at this house, right? Do you need a big showroom to invite a bunch of people over? Like, why do you want these things? What is in it for them? Understanding that client, right? Your person is so beneficial because the entire time then through the clothes or through the time that you're talking to them, you just bring up exactly what their, their, their eyes, right? You bring up what's so important to them that they will forfeit everything and anything to make this happen because you're telling them that this is what's going to give it to them, right? And by doing that is going to set you apart from everyone else because they don't know how to relate to them, right? How to uh, uh, be attractive to them and, and listen to what they need individually. The next one is executive. So executives, I'm also an executive, but I'm first a validator that I'm an executive. I am right to the point. Do not sit. If you knock on my door and you take more than two seconds to tell me what the heck you're doing, I will leave. <laughs> I'll just be like, okay, peace. I'm out. You know, I shut the door. These are the hardest people to get to say yes. Now, intellects, as long as you know how to position yourself and know that they need details and they need all the ins and outs, you, could, you can win them over every time as long as you have the backing for it. You have the contracts that are the right contracts and, you, and you're not missing spelling. They're the people that will not sign a contract if their name's not spelled right, even though you can just initial it, right? They're the people that will back out of a contract because you missed dates wrong or you had to resend con like contracts a couple of times. Those, that's not going to fly for those, you know, intellects. Executives, they'll let you slide a little bit, but they are right to the point and punctual. They are not going to handle any BS, right? They need you to be on top of your game, quick and right to the point. So, and you can make really quick decisions though. That's the best part about being an executive, right? Even though there are some downsides, right? We can talk about that here in a minute, but 
being an executive allows you to accomplish so many more things than maybe a relationship person, even though that's also an amazing talent and, and, and experience. Uh, the problem though is, is usually relationship people, they take a lot of time because they need a, they need validation. You know, they need other people to tell them it's okay. And they need, you know, relationships and they need to make sure that we can bond and, and all these things. It's like, oh, okay, great. But like, let's just get this done. Right. <laughs> so that's me, right? I'm the executive. It's like, no matter what, I'm like, okay, how, how do I get this done? And we are selfish. Unfortunately, we, we think of ourselves a lot of times before other people. Now there's good traits to that. Right. And there's bad things to that. Uh, one of the best things though, for, uh, you know, most executives is they're confident It's because they know what they want and they know how to get it. And so luckily all of us have a mixture of all four of, or all, you know, all of these. So it's not that you're just one specific thing, right? It's just that there's one thing that's going to motivate you more than anything else. And, uh, proof is definitely an executive. So, uh, for me in real estate, I needed to have proof that this was going to work for me. I couldn't have somebody just like me on the Zoom call right now be like, hey, you should go out and do this mainly, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, okay, yeah, cool. Who are you? I don't give crap. Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care at all. But I would care about is proof. Show me. Take me to the field. Show me how it works. Show me a contract. Show me people saying yes, right? And that's what I definitely want to do for you guys. So today I'm not going to be able to go out in the field and, you know, have a party and go knock on some doors with you. But I totally can. I totally will. So I'm sure they'll invite me back on. It'll be super fun. I love knocking doors. I love talking to people because I love people, right? Humanism. It's such a beautiful thing. And we, if we can learn people, we can learn, learn to love all people and whoever they are, but be able to start connecting with them immediately and showing them that you are a person that can immediately re like relate to them and understand their concerns, understand what's going to motivate them. will set you ab above all other agents. I can guarantee you that. So have some fun with this. Recognize that there are so many different ways to, to um, ignite, you know, the fire within somebody. And most of the time it's just questions. So uh, I know that there's, you know, so many great quotes by the questions are the answers, but that's also a really good book. If you haven't read that questions are the answers, such a, such a great book. You should read it if you haven't. Okay. Secret number two, how to position yourself uh, so that every, you know, they, your client says yes every time. What? is their hot button? Bring up concerns first. Okay. Who can tell me what a hot button is? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, doesn't it just kind of mean you're hitting an area that's of special interest to them, their hot button, what motivates them, what mm -hmm. they're original about, something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So what's going to get them to say yes, right? What's, gonna, what's, what's that thing that's hanging over their head that's like, oh my gosh, if I could just get this, right, then all of a sudden, uh, everything would be fine, right? I'd have everything I needed. Um, I wouldn't have to stress. I wouldn't have to do, you right? Whatever it might be, it's that one thing that's going to push them over the edge. And once you can discover that and feel that, uh, you'll never, never go back. I can tell you that. It's, it's so fun to pick out people's hot buttons, see what motivates them. So we're going to dive in a little bit of what a hot button is. And I'm going to have you hold it hostage from them because also that's super fun. <laughs> so we'll dive into that a little bit. People make decisions on, based on a few things. Everyone makes decisions moving towards pleasure or moving away from pain. Now, I'm sure you've heard this a million times in different sales courses and different, you know, uh, communication courses, but uh, really understanding that that is all of us. We are always moving away from, right, pain and towards pleasure. That's it. So if we're making a decision and hopefully a quick decision, that's right, as agents, we're like, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. We got time, right? We, the house is going to sell. You know, you only have a couple hours before it's going to go under your contract. Like right now is the time, especially right now in this buying market. It's crazy, right? 10 offers on one house in like four hours. You're like, what? So having positioning yourself before you even go see a house, right? And, and letting your client know and figuring out who your client is before you even get to the house is extremely important. If you know they're not a quick decision maker and you know that they're not an executive, right? Because an executive will get in and get out like, boom, right? Super fast. Because they don't want, they don't want any, they don't want to sit there and chit chat like relators, right? They're not going to sit around or go open up all the electrical boxes. They know that they ha they're hiring a professional to do that. They don't need to do any of that. They get in, they look around, they're like, sweet, I like it. Boom, they're out, right? Like that's an executive. But that's not everybody. And so recognizing who they are and positioning yourself. So it's like, hey, if I show you this house, 
are you able to make a quick decision? I'm going to need you to recognize that you've got to get in and get out. This isn't a, a time that you get to go, go dilly daddle, right? So positioning yourself, understanding who you're up against and knowing the market is going to be really helpful for you guys. Why are they selling or why are they buying guys? We have to figure out what is that one thing that's going to make them react, right? So that you can push it and push it hard and keep pushing it. <laughs> and more so than anything, hold it kind of hostage so that when you leave a house that you know for a fact fits all of their criteria, it's going to make them super happy, but they're the intellect, for instance. If they're an intellect, they take forever to make any decision, just so you know. Any decision. It's like, you know, it could be years later and they're like, oh, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. It's like, I told you this like, you know, <laughs> forever ago. Well, if that's the case and you know that that's the case, you, you can hold things hostage. So if you recognize early on in your conversation with them, you recognize that, you know, their one thing that was like the biggest for them was a place for uh, their daughter to be right next to because they had like a baby, like a, a nursery room off of the master bedroom, right? And if that was like the one thing that just really pushed the, you saw them light up a little bit, you saw them like, oh my gosh, if we could just have this, right? But the key is to ask them enough questions. You have to ask them so many questions so that they can give you this one thing, right? And hold a hostage. Don't bring it up. Don't even show them it. Like in the house, let them walk around, whatever, right? And then once they're in there and, and, and then you go, okay, listen, guys, it has the nursery off of your master bedroom like you're asking for. And then just be paused. And let that soak in for them. Let them feel that and be like, oh my gosh, it, they, it has the one thing. I know we should write up a contract, right? It's letting them feel what they, they told you, what was that one thing they needed and you gave it to them. Now, sometimes we can't, and that's just life, right? And sometimes we, we, we can't make everybody happy. You just got to deal with that. That's what sales are, unfortunately, right? We can't always make everyone happy, but it feels really good when we can do that. Holding things hostage is a great way to position yourself also in the market, because if you can recognize that everything, right, is so important to people, but pulling one thing back and don't give it to them, right? Because then people always want what they can't have, right? That, that's it. Just don't give it to them. Hold it and then give it to them right at the last second when the buying power is at the highest, okay? So a couple examples. Why are you selling or buying, right? We're always moving from the pain to pleasure. We talked about that. Get them to say something painful. So as you're asking them questions, I want you to make them feel. I want them to, people make decisions on feelings, right? We don't make decisions on, oh, it's pretty. No, it's how they feel. At the end of the day, it's always how they feel. How did you feel in this room? How did you feel in that room, right? How did you feel when you walked into the house? How did you feel? Everything's about feeling. So before you can get to a house or before you're going to show them a house or before you were going to sell, sell their house, right? Before you're going to sell their house, why are they selling? What's painful? Why don't they want to be in this neighborhood anymore? Are they moving, running out of room? Oh my gosh, you only have one bathroom. Oh my gosh, you have one bathroom and you have four kids. You're a saint. How are you doing that? How hard is that? Make them talk about how horrible this is, right? Get them to feel something. That way you, that's the pain point. That's the pain pressure that when you go to, they, you go to tell them, maybe it's not the price they wanted to list, right? But when you go to tell them the price, all of a sudden be like, but so follow up. Anytime you drop, this is the key. So this is a little, little tip. Anytime you're going to drop something that you know they're not going to like, make sure you follow up with your pain, the, the button, right? Follow up with the button. Because if you can follow up with your hot button, they forget about the pain, right? It's like, oh yeah, but it's resolved because you just made it better. So if you're going to bring up a pain point, like, oh my gosh, like one bathroom, right? Like that's great. Bring that up right after you tell them that maybe they're hoping to list their house for $450,000 and you let them know that it's going to only be able to be listed for 410, 420. And they're going, I thought, but listen, guys, listen, I found the greatest home for you and it has four bathrooms. <laughs> right? All of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Right? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So hold these pain points Host, right? Keep them, bottle them up, man. Put them right next to you and put them in your phone, put them in your little note cards. Because when you start talking to people and you start to understand who they are and how they behave, right? People are always moving from pain to pleasure. So if you're going to drop something painful, make sure you follow it up with pleasure. I guess that's kind of all I have to say about this one, but 
super fun. Have some fun with it because you can do it with your, like I said, siblings, you're <laughs> you can do it because we all always have to deliver uh, news that somebody doesn't want. We always do, right? No matter what, it's life. And there's a lot of bad news and a lot of crazy news right now in, in the market um, and or just in the world. And so when we are sharing bad news or we're sharing something that's painful or hurtful, make sure we are always following it up with something good because that's how we will win, right? And get them to say, yes, I, I'm doing it. I was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> of course you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Let's play around for some examples. Mr. and Mrs. Byer, in order for me to serve you at the highest level possible, I have a few exploratory questions to ask. Now, this makes it very broad, right? Like I can ask them anything and anything, and they're going to answer. People love answering questions. I don't know why, and they will tell you anything if you ask. It's, it's kind of, in the beginning, I know uncomfortable. I, we've played a lot of games in you know, a lot of our classes that we do and people get really uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to ask. It's like, well, ask anyway. What's the worst they can say? No, who cares, right? If they say no, I don't want to ask that. I'm like, oh, okay, moving on next question, right? Who cares? So your, your answers will help me hone in on what is most important to you and your next home purchase. To begin, we need to talk about your buying power. So see how when you say that, you're actually edifying them. They have buying power. They're making them feel good about something. Oh, you mean I have buying power? I, you're right. Let's talk about this. Make sure you're, you're edifying the person that you're about to talk to about this. Because you're going to ask a lot of questions that might be extremely uncomfortable for them. Uh, or they might be really painful, right? You're going to be pushing on that pain button really hard in the first, like, first part of this uh, questionnaire. And that's okay. I want you to be okay with making people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it's okay to make people feel uncomfortable. The more awkward you are, usually the better salesman you are. And I know that that's also kind of weird and you know maybe not so uh, how you've seen it in the past, but it is. Being able to have this awkward silence, it's okay. You don't always have to be talking. I teach myself this, remind myself this all the time because I'm a talker, but, uh, but it is, it's okay to just be in silence. And the next person that talks usually wins, right? So it's okay to ask a question and then wait for the answer. They will give it to you. Okay, let them sell themselves. All right, so people again, do not wanna be sold, right? But they love to buy. So if you can help them make it their idea, they're gonna have so much more fun and they're gonna have such a much better experience. The more questions you ask, the more they feel you care and are on their team, right? You got to be on their side. You got to be defense mode, right? Like, oh man, we got to do this for you guys because of this, this, and this. But you only can know those things if you ask enough questions. The more you ask, the more you can use and position yourself to get them to say yes, okay? So if you have any questions about this, you know, this is a good time to maybe take a second, but we're, there's gonna, probably a lot of questions you're not going to have in a second because of the fill felt found that we're going to dump into, but okay. Never too many questions, right? So you've always heard this, right? Everyone, yeah, like everyone's heard, ask questions, ask questions, like that is the key to all of sales. Uh, and or in life, like your kids, if you don't know what's going on, right? You're like, oh, like you're freaking out because you need to know what's going on in everybody's lives, right? Like that's our human nature is we need to know what's going on. We're so nosy, right? Um, and that's why reality TV shows are so great. It's like, oh, what are they doing? You know, like, and celebrities are so famous because we care. We need to know what's going on. And if you can help them understand how much you need to know about them, that also makes them feel really good and edifies them. What are their goals? How fast do they need to sell? And do they need quick money? Maybe a cash offer, right? Learn your client because unfortunately, more often than not, I meet agents all the time, right? Because I'm selling all these properties or, or buying all these properties. And I meet so many really, really good agents. I meet good, really good agents. No, I don't guys. No, I'm embarrassed, truthfully. I call myself now an agent and I'm like, I like that title all that well. <laughs> and it's not for any other reason, right? Then, then just simply it has a bad stigma. Like all of a sudden we're these nasty salesmen or we're, you know, we're not these um, people that are trying to help people and we're friends with all these people. No, all of a sudden we're these nasty, oh, that's just a nasty salesman and they're greedy and they're this and they're trying to do this and they try to do this. And I just hear all these horror stories all the time. And you know, I'm lumped in with all of you now, right? This is, this is great, but I, I really want you to explore the idea of you know, that you're a salesman is not an ugly word. It's not a, a grimy you know, car salesman, -y, you know? Like it doesn't need to have that title. It needs to be like, 
yeah, I'm a saleswoman, right? Like, and I'm a great saleswoman because I'm going to give you an amazing experience. And you're going to be so grateful that you purchased your home with me. Or you're going to be so happy that you sold your house with me. Confidence, right? Remember that how you speak to people is everything. So if you're going to say, I'm going to try to sell your house. Oh, heck no, that's not going to fly, right? I'm trying to do something. Get that out of here, right? You don't ever try to do anything. You do or you don't, and that's it. So make sure that you catch your vocabulary. I know Sarah, I think, is on the line here, and we went door knocking a couple weeks ago, and you know it was so funny because she's like, "Oh, I I keep saying I'm trying, right? Or I'm I'm hoping, or right?" She would say these things, and oh my god, yeah, they see right through you, people, especially executives. Oh my gosh, they're gonna be like, "And next, right?" Like they don't give two crap. Slam the door, like I don't care, uh, because they need you to get right to the point and be confident. They need you to be assertive and make sure that you know what you're doing, right? So if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna go in the field and you're wanting all these new clients, make sure you can handle them, right? Take them on or fake it till you make it. Either way, I don't care, but just do it anyway. <laughs> like, I don't care. Fake it till you make it, that's totally fine. But don't be the person that sits behind and goes, but I'm trying. No, you're not trying if you keep saying you're trying. That's not trying, right? Just do. And then, we're, and then everyone's good. Okay, so understanding the people, do they want long-term residual money? Sometimes homeowners don't really understand that there's multiple different options to sell their home, right? Um, I sold my very first actual transaction when I joined EXP uh, and the margins team over here um, was a, because I've been a real estate investor for a while now, right? But I just got my license, what is it now? Four, year, four months ago, three months ago? And uh, my first transaction as an actual agent uh, was a homeowner who she's like, right, I want to sell my fast for $450,000 and it's worth 400. I'm going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Position myself, right? I got to figure that out. So I did. I knew her hot buns. I knew who she was. I knew the type of personality she was. And I thought, well, you know what? I know I exactly how to get you what you want, but it's going to be creative financing. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you said you're optimistic. You said that you're excited to, to learn new different ways to, to make money and, uh, and you want to sell your house at 450,000. She's like, yep. I'm like, perfect. It's sold, but these are the conditions. She's like, what do you mean? So it was seller finance. They got $75,000 up front. They get a cash flow every single month. They make, you know, about $500 a month cash flow because they own the house outright every single month. And it's for five year bloom. If in five years, right, the guy doesn't want it, they can sell it again at a higher price because that's cool, right? Or they can sell it at 450,000, like the total lump sum. How awesome is that? The guy needed it anyway. She got exactly what she wanted. Be creative people, right? Give people what they want, but make sure there's a little like pullback, right? You can't give it all to them. You gotta hold that hostage, <laughs> like the paint button, okay? So be clever, be creative, and know that you can, you, if you don't know the answer, you can reach out for help too. That is a, a, a scenario that I feel like I actually am really good at, and that's just because I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> I don't, I actually don't know a lot of things. I totally fake a lot of things. And that's okay, know your strengths, right? Know who you are, and reach out to other people. Because, you know, if you can reach out to the people who are way better than you, that's how you make multi-million, you know, millions and millions of real estate at a big, huge portfolios is just simply knowing your strengths, right? And how, what type of person you are and put everyone else around you so that you don't do all the other stuff that you don't want to do, right? Or that you don't know how to do. And that's too easy. All right. Make sure you always set, set um, you know, set clear expectations up first. This will save you a lot of time and a lot of money, guys. Under promise and always over deliver. You've heard it a million times. I'm just going to reiterate that because I'm tired of agents lying to me. So there you go. <laughs> I don't want that. That's not, that's ugly, right? We don't need that. This is where it gets really fun. And we're going to have some maybe role play here uh, because this is, you know, I've used this for now 15, 14 years and I made a lot of money doing it. And uh, I know that you guys probably have two, but maybe you haven't mastered it. Maybe you haven't really dove into how uncomfortable it can make you feel and how uncomfortable it can make the client or your customer feel. The homeowner is going to feel very uncomfortable when you start using feel felt found for a second. But if you position it right and you start practicing it, you will win every single time. Just like my Dos Equis guy here, all right? So get, <laughs> you're gonna win, right? But what I do, I close, I close, I close, I close. So make sure you use it. Sell through telling stories. So who, who's heard that? Let's open this up a little bit. Who's, who's used it? Do we know like what that is? Phil felt found it's a, a type of, you know, sales tool that we've used, you know, in the sales world for years. Anybody use this strategy before? 
Yes, good job, Brandon. Okay, anybody else? Maybe, maybe not. Shantae, have you, have you ever heard of it before? No, I'm good, how about that? Look at this, I'm gonna be able to teach somebody something new today, I like it. <laughs> okay, so, so too fun. If, if you haven't heard of Phil Felt Found, it's a really easy, in the beginning it's not, so it's gonna be awkward like I prepped you for, okay? So in the beginning it, it feels like, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> it's just awkward, right? But once you get really good at it, ooh, you are a lethal weapon. And I'm telling you, it's worth it. So just practice it, have some fun with your kids. Uh, so what simply it means, Phil Felt Found, is you're going to help somebody become a part of a story. So instead of telling them what they want, you're going to show them how and why they want it. Okay, so that's kind of the understanding behind it, but it's a formula, Phil Felt Found, how to do that, how to tell the story, okay? So we'll, we'll jump into this. So how to get a yes, right? Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, in order, let me move this, so I can read this a little bit better. Here, here we go. Mrs. and Mrs. Buyer, in order for me to serve you at the highest level possible, just have a few questions to ask. I know you're under a lot of stress trying to figure out exactly what to do with your time and with your home. I have a few solutions. First, I just have a few questions to figure out what is most important to you as we progress. Now, just that simple statement, you know, if you're on the phone with them or, you know, whatever it might be, or if you're on the doorstep or you're in a chat box or whatever it might be, um, just that will open up this very like, wait a second, this seems like they're going to an extra level to figure out who I am. Okay, I'm intrigued, right? I, I don't know very many people that are gonna be like, oh, actually, I don't wanna answer questions. No, this is very like, this is set up very well so they can get to the next step. Okay, so objections. This is why we use, we know everyone has objections. Um, I, I can't find, maybe an objection might be that people would love to sell right now and I mean, everyone's gonna shake their head probably to this one. Everyone would love to sell because the marketplace is so high. Everyone would love to sell. Why aren't they? Why is the market so low? We have the lowest amount of you know, homes that are for sale right now than we have in a long time. I think we're at a two week turnaround. So if we sold no more homes in the state of Utah, so I guess not, I don't know about Oregon, sorry, and other people that are on, on, on this webinar right now, but if we sold no more homes in Utah, uh, in two weeks, we'd be completely out, all homes would be sold. That's crazy, right? Like that's insane. So an objection would be, why are more people selling if, if they have a ton of probably capital on their home? Why are people not selling? Well, there's a lot of reasons, right? Fear, I and mean, they don't know what's going on in the election, blah, 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 right? There's a million objections that could come up. Well, more so than anything, I feel like the most uh, prominent objection would be they can't find a property that is equal value, right? Would you not agree? They can't, if they sell this house, then what are they gonna buy? I mean, a trailer? <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? They get really hung up on this idea that, you know, if I sell, I can't find something else that's going to work for me. So that's, I would say the number one objection that I get, maybe you're getting something different and I'd love maybe to hit some chat box and this is where we can do some role play. If you're coming up some, up against some objections, I'd love to role play with you. I'd love to go through some of those objections and so you, show you how feel felt found can, can get rid of those objections or soften the blow, right? So that they don't feel like objections, they feel like you've resolved their problem. And, and that's the whole idea behind it. Because again, people love to buy. They want to buy from you. They want to sell their house. They want to buy a new home. They want new things, but they have to have like permission, right? They have to feel like they can have permission to do those things. And this just sets them up to do so. So customer objection, whatever that might be, then you're gonna say feel, okay? So you need to bring up some way, let the customer know you care about their concerns. Okay, so you're gonna somehow create an F, you know, emph emphasize with them, right? Create empathy. Make sure if it's not you, like, oh my gosh, I know exactly how you feel. Well, it can be you, right? If you've had a personal experience that can relate to them, but a lot of times they don't wanna, they don't care about how you feel. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, right? They're like, I don't care about how you feel, but they care about maybe as somebody else. So like, hey, you know, I know exactly how you feel. Your neighbor just down the street actually went through a very similar situation, right? That's setting the stage. Okay, so feel some way you need to feel what's going on. You need to recognize that this is a problem and you can't just blow past it, right? It's a big deal to them or they wouldn't have brought it up to you in the first place. Now, there are smoke screens and that's a whole nother training. Smoke screens can just be somebody saying something to get rid of you, right? So a smoke screen is something like, 
if you call somebody up or you're knocking on the door, or you're talking to a friend or whatever, they're I'm like, Hey, have you ever thought about selling your house? I'm like, Oh, I'm a renter. I would never buy a house. So I'm going to die tomorrow. Okay. Irrelevant. They don't really want to talk to you. Right. So I just keep bugging them, asking them questions anyway, because that's what I do. But, um, but th that's what a smoke screen is. Right. So sometimes people bring up an objection. It's not really an objection because they're just trying to get rid of you. And that's fine on the phone or, uh, whatever it might be. So we have a whole list of those. I can put a link in below of just like what are smoke screens, like, or what are real life actual objections that are a concern and that will stop a sale, that will stop them from buying or selling. Those are objections, right? So hopefully we can understand the difference between just somebody like, you know, blowing smoke um, or actual real concerns. Okay, so you're gonna feel with them, right? You're gonna show empathy with them. The next step is you're going to get them to, like to feel the, the felt scenario. Okay, so you're going to get them to feel the felt. Remind a customer that this concern, objection has been raised by others before and has been addressed. So in that same scenario that I just used, hey, customer, right? I know exactly how you feel because your neighbor just down the street is going through the same crazy thing. Like I can't even believe it, right? Whatever it might be, or just was going through them. But it's crazy what they felt by working with me right? So kind of position yourself as the felt, right? And, uh, or a scenario that would make them feel the, the feeling of felt, right? Something that they could feel. So if they're feeling something, then they're going to felt something and then they found. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's go to the next one. So this is how it kind of all comes together here. Pain, right? Pain and objections, examples, feel, feel, found. We're going to run through multiple scenarios. Hopefully if you guys can come up with some, like text me, um, whatever, we can get through all of them. I have so much fun with playing around with this feel felt found because it's a story, right? Selling, it's just a story. That's all it is. So again, make sure that it's not a, you don't feel salesman-y, right? You're just giving them a story. Okay, so we can't find anything we like that makes this worth our time to sell. How many times have you heard that? I've heard it a lot. So if that's like their objection, right? Or their pain point, if you will, uh, I totally understand what you're talking about. You have a neighbor who is feeling the same way. After we started working together, right? So feeling, right? Feeling the same way. After we started working together in just a few months, we were able to find them exactly what they were looking for. They felt, bingo, right? Boom. They felt like there were never going to be the right home until they met me. Position yourself, right? You're the felt. You're the person that resolved their problem. You're the person that is the, woo, look at me, look at me. What they found, right? There's your found. So you got to complete the circuit. You got to complete the story. What they found was they had been overseeing, or excuse me, yeah, they have been overseeing so many great homes because they were not an expert. Okay, now this is very dry, right? This is just a little tiny script here. You can elaborate all you want. Right? They didn't know who, they, 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 what they found was they couldn't find the right home because they weren't an agent, right? They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't have all the tools and skills that we have, that I have. I am sure just like your neighbor, you'll feel the same, right? Pass the paper over, I'll let them sign it. Here we go. Let's get this done. You know what I mean? So having that position of like, oh, you know what? All of a sudden they're going to be like, huh? Well, you just resolve. They, they can't say it again, right? So this is the key. If you resolve their problem like this with a fill fell found, they can't bring it up again because you resolved their problem. They can't be like, oh, well, but I feel like, right? I feel like I can't find a house. Wait a second, I, I just told you that I'm going to fix that, right? Like I, I've solved that problem. You can't. So they don't, they really don't. Honestly, in, you know, 14 years of experience, if you can do a good job of bringing up this, their objection, and then pushing them through this loop. It might sound like I said cheesy. It might sound really uncomfortable on the video, like, oh, I don't like to do that, you know? But if you get good at it, it will change your entire career. I can promise you that. Because people love to be felt and heard and, and understood, right? And if you can resolve their problems, like, oh yeah, boom, 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 here you go. Then they're like, oh, I guess, I can't say no now, <laughs> right? Because you just resolved my problem. So I uh, guess where do I sign? So have fun with it. It, it is uh, something that you have to practice at. You won't be good at it right off the cuff, right? Um, but, uh, you know, have some fun. Get in the mirror with somebody, you know? Uh, I'm going to actually go back one slide. We're going to stay there for a second. I'm going to open this up for a little bit more questions because I would like to actually... Um, 
yeah, just have some fun. See if anybody has any questions about the strategy. Uh, so Shante, you have never, uh, thanks for staying on here, by the way. That was nice. <laughs> um, you, you never heard of Phil Fowl Found. Did that make sense to you? Yeah, definitely. I think that I've heard it explained in different ways. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate this because I, I do hate sales. Like I am a relationship person. So if I can change my mindset and think of it as storytelling. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. I love it. Very good. Beautiful. That's brilliant. Well done, my dear. And it, it's, it is a relationship thing because we do care, right? We, we are trying to resolve their concerns. We are trying to understand who they are. And that's why we opened up with the drive system. If we can understand who they are, right? And ask a few questions to help us support, because as a relator, right? Um, you need to feel like you're connecting with people, right? That your relationships are far more important than anything else that's going on. The cars, the houses, you know, but knowing that people, kn knowing that people uh, that you care about love you and are there for you and you are there for them, is, is it the most important for you? Um, yes, probably. I am a mixed bag when you look at, yeah. at these drive options, but yeah, it is yeah. very interesting. And, and most of us are right. But that, but if the thing that really motivates us is just that net net, right. That's how we need to say, okay, right now for sure. I'm like, okay, you're our party planner. <laughs> Yay. Shante, you just got hired. No, just <laughs> She's like, oh, what? I don't want to be a party planner. <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding, right? That would freak you out. Like, oh, that's not me, right? So understanding uh, just how to also uh, help people, right? Uh, position yourself in a way that they're going to respond to you also helps. Because if you start talking about things that they don't care about or want to talk about, right? Now we're terrible. And now it is sales mini. We're trying to sell them an idea that they don't want. But if we are their friend and we actually care about what they have to say, right? Actually listen. Yeah. 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 Oh, we have someone. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Hello. Uh, have you used this before? And tell me about your experience. Yes, actually, I have used the Phil Felt Found, um, and it works really well. And like you said, it kind of feels uncomfortable in the very beginning because you feel kind of salesy. Um, but the more that you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. So the only way to get past this, folks, is just to do it. Yep. Yep. That's it. Just simply... And if you're getting it right, if you could just do it on the doors, right? I know that you don't necessarily want to go door knocking. I get that. It's like so old school and that's fine. That's totally me, right? I'm so old school, but, um, but it's a good way to kind of get your nerves out. Wouldn't you think like, just kind of get it over with, like somebody will give you an objection and be like, Oh, I'm feel felt found. <laughs> like it's just a way to force yourself to, to get over that anxiety and that feeling of uncomfortable. Cause it is right. It is uncomfortable when you first starting start out using it, but then it gets easy. It becomes part of a natural habit for you. So uh, that's fun. Have you solved a lot of problems and are they, actually, this is my question for you, Kim. If you use it, do they ever come back with that same objection? No, because you've, yeah, you've already eliminated it. <laughs> right, it's so fantastic. Uh, the other thing is bringing up their objections first. So if you know a specific, this is a, just a little tip that's offside rail here, but, um, and I know we're, oh, we are like over time. So we'll wrap this up. But um, one little last tip is if you know a neighborhood or you know a neighborhood or an area and you know a concerns about the neighborhood, for instance, or an area, uh, and, or, you know, that your homeowner has specific concerns, right? Like, oh, I don't want to live on the, say the West side. Like that's their big thing, right? I don't want to live on the West side. You already know. And you're about to go show my house. <laughs> the side. Like, oh, okay. You told me not to, but I'm doing it anyway. Cause well, if it's your whatever other right, criteria, right? Uh, bear with me, right? I'm going to show you something beautiful. But if you set the stage first and bring up their concern first and say, listen, I know, right. That you don't want to live on the West side, but then bring up their hot button right? Bring up something that is relatable and say, but this is how I'm going to solve this problem. This is how I'm going to give you exactly what you want. It's worth looking at, right? So just make sure that if you can bring up an objection first, when you get to that house, for instance, on the west side of the valley or whatever, and they go, well, I don't like the west side. I, you to I told you not to show me anything on the west side. Well, they can't necessarily say that because, well, you already said, hey, listen, I already know, right? You told me this. 
but we're going to go look at it anyway. I'm just curious what your thoughts are. They can't be upset about it or mad about it or frustrated with it. They could just be like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you already brought it up. You brought the concern up first. Now you resolved it. Now we can decide together, right? It's not a huge deal. Um, but definitely bringing up concerns first is super helpful. Um, or it might be something in the house. Anyway, it's a whole nother training. So I'm going to leave this for questions. We have probably one minute for questions. Any questions from anyone? Did you get through all your slides? And if not, can we get a copy of them? Yes, I did not get through all of my slides and you absolutely can. <laughs> I, will, I will make sure that Jeff can send it out to everybody. I do have a question about knowing the market. Like, where do y'all go to find out what the current interest rate is? You're a mortgage lender. Huh? So you, you definitely, you know, positioning yourself in networking with other people that are in the industry is extremely helpful. I have a team and you definitely need to surround yourself with a team. This is my answer. I would love obviously you guys to, you know, answer too, but um, surrounding yourself with a team of influencers for the market is extremely important because uh, you're, I don't, I'm not the expert in a lot of things. Uh, and I hope you can relate to that, Kim, right? There's just things that you're good at and things that maybe you're not so good at or don't need to take the time to do. So I rely heavily on my team to give me in detailed information. So I have a couple, you know, loan offices that are constantly giving me exact up-to-date time, you know, information on what's going on, like a pulse on the market, right? For uh, interest rates and you know, where it's going and how long it's going to stay amazing, which great news guys, it's going to stay awesome for a minute. So that's cool. Right. Um, so, but, but that's, that's what I would do. I would just, um, I would recognize who or the questions that you might be, you know, thinking like, Oh, how do I not know this? And why do I let's, if you don't know the answer, that's exactly what I was saying earlier, right? If you don't know an answer, this is a good place to ask, right? So good job. You asked the question, right? So good job. Good job. But then surround yourself with those people that know those answers. Cause there's no way that I'm going to be able to have a pulse on exactly what's going on in the marketplace for loans or interest rates and all that stuff all the time. That's just not our job really. I mean, it is to know, but we're not the expert in that field unless you're a loan officer also. But um, so hopefully that answers your question. It's super low and it's going to stay low for a minute. Hey, Maylee, I'd probably even add to that. Um, even if uh, Kim, let's say you want, you know the answer. Somebody asks you what the interest rates and you know the answer. Oftentimes I will say that's a lender question. You don't want to be the go-to source for everything real estate. There's title questions. There's lender questions. There's all kinds of things that are going to come up that you need to show the depth of your team and your relationship and the network that Maylee's talking about by deferring to your lender. And maybe you haven't even made a connection with them yet to your, to, to your lender. And that would be a good connection, right? Let me hook you up with my preferred guy. Or let me give you two to choose from. Uh, maybe you like one personality better than the other one. But um, I'm always deferring. Like, like even here, I often say that's a Lynn question. <laughs> do with you know the accounting or property manager or whatever i don't even pretend to answer that one so uh your specific question was like on interest rates don't think you have to know okay no because the answer will be different during the day at different times anyway. yeah yeah <laughs> totally. and it's an opportunity to be like oh my gosh that's such a great question right like oh that's fantastic you absolutely should know that i don't know that i'm not the expert I'm going to give you, you know, so-and-so's phone number. Then immediately you're pairing the loan officer and the person together. Perfect. Right? Like that's a forced meeting of like, Hey, what's the interest rate? Perfect. Let's run credit. Let's figure out if you're even able to buy a house. Right? So, uh, that's a great positioning. I love that. Any others? Thank you. Good, good answer. Well, that was a good question. So there you go. Um, email addresses. Let's see if there's anything in the chat, Neely. Okay. Um, Oh, Sydney had just put something in there. So some of the people that didn't register just putting their emails in there for copies of the slides. It sounds like this was maybe part one, maybe mm -hmm. two or part two or part three to this presentation. Yep. So just... There's so much. I can't even don't talk. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question or chat. Melee, there's Go so ahead. many great things about what you've shared today. Um, one of the things that I really, really love that I think would be super helpful for a lot of those people that may not have that personality that's super interactive is those question asking that questions and asking questions takes that um, takes the spotlight off of you as the salesman, the agent and helps you get to know them and also lets them know they're being heard. That is the biggest thing I hear is that my agent didn't listen to me. Mm. 
didn't care. And so I love to ask the questions. And when we're walking through our first house together, I'm always saying, please talk out loud. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. So mm -hmm. that to know about them. It's not about me. Mm -mm. That's, that's what a lot of this is about, is if you put them first and you listen to what they need, mm -hmm. then it makes everything so much better. Yeah, no, I love that. That's, that's brilliant. And, you know, I recognize that you're a validator, right? We're sort of a lot alike in certain ways. And, you know, somebody showed me a house and they're like, okay, like, do you love it, right? Talking to me, asking me all these questions, like, okay, can you see yourself, you know, uh, entertaining and having a party at your house? And, you know, can you see, can you feel this experience, right? And I thought like, no, I actually can't. And it's like, well, this isn't my house for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know what you're important for them, right? Like, I need to be able to entertain people. I need to have all a good time. I need to be able to be like, wow, cool. Like, look at that, right? Like, I, I want that. that. That makes me happy, right? To know that people are having a good time, that they're having a good experience. And I was able to help them do that or have that experience. So because of that, recognizing who you're showing, right? They need to feel whatever it is. It's so important. Like, so often, right, in sales, we're like, oh, well, do you like the color? No. Uh, next. It's like... Well, and yeah. it is so helpful to know what personality they are, especially like you find out you're working with an engineer, mm. totally want to get them the numbers. And so I know exactly what lender I'll send them to. If they want different lenders, I'll say, okay, this lender's right to the point. This lender's going to get you the numbers. They're going to be super fast. They're not, they're going to talk fast. They're going to get it done. Or you can have the guy that holds your hand and they don't want the guy that holds their hand. They yeah. want the person that's going to get straight to it. And so I love that. It's the first thing I always want to do too, is figure out who am I dealing with? What do they? because I don't want to put my personality type on them, which is what a lot of people do. Yeah, I learned the hard way with that one. Yeah, it's like, oh, everyone's yeah. it. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I'll have to slow down because I'm such a like right at the point type person that I'm like, oh, wait, you want to have a conversation. Okay, let's talk. Let's <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my bad. You know, like I forget, you know. <laughs> Right. so but definitely right having uh yeah i don't know it's <laughs> terrible that. even my best friend and friend like we talk maybe once every two weeks like we just <laughs> you want to talk to Maylee? schedule a business meeting dang it let's <laughs> 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 say talk to me it's terrible but um i'll leave with a couple things I, it's been an absolute pleasure it's been so fun being here and thank you for just letting me be here and be a part of what you guys are doing it's so inspiring and uh, I know that we're about to shake some stuff loose, right? We're definitely about to, to have so much fun and to um, tear, tear up the, the, the known, you know, agent world that we're in. It's like this kind of, you know, well, let's, let's make this a beautiful experience, right? Let's have fun with it. Uh, let's dive into something that can make us feel good too inside rather than this like nasty, ugly, like salesy thing, right? It's like, mm -hmm. no, get out of there, right? Um, so I'm going to leave with this. Um, I want, you know, my husband's written a book. It's called Mindset to Millionaire. Um, he's, you know, a top uh, real estate guru, if you will, in the nation. He's super fun to listen to. He's extremely entertaining, in fact. Uh, so that's fun, right? Like, that's nice. And <laughs> you, get, you get the price of two, which is great with, for both of us, right? But um, I know for a fact, something that I've learned from him is, uh, and any multimillionaire that I know or how we did or, you know, different people that have done it, is you need multiple streams of income. So I'm gonna leave you with, you need passive income, right? If, if you get, what you don't know if you wake up tomorrow. Guys, we don't know if tomorrow comes. And we need to know that our lives are taken care of. We need to know that we have positioned ourselves in a way that we have good relationships, we have good friendships, we have good, good people around us, and that we're doing good things for people, right? But we're also taking care of ourselves. We have to be selfish. More often than not, relators, right? Don't take care of themselves. And then that hurts, right? Because then you're like, oh, but I don't have any time for me now. It's like, eh, right? Passive income solves all those problems. You need to position yourself. You need massive income. That can be big selling up, you know, your uh, fix and flips and whatever, or selling lots of homes, right? Resid on the massive side. So massive versus passive. Passive just comes on all the time, right? It's just there whether you ask for it or not, essentially. Massive income, however, is selling that home, right? Or, or buying you know, or helping a buyer buy a home, right? That's, that's quick money. That's massive income coming in all at once, but it's gone just as fast as it comes in. And that's the scary part about massive income. You need both, right? You need portfolio income. That's rentals and you know, all these big things you can sell off if you need to. If times get hard, you can sell it all off. I know we were having a conversation about that. Uh, profit share income. Some of you don't know what that is. 
you need to figure out what that is. Get with somebody that brought you to this call because profit sharing in real estate is like the best thing in the entire world, right? Um, stock income. I make money every single time I sell a house. Every single time I sell a house. What? That's freaking awesome. So we'll talk about that. I'm sure they're going to dive into it. Double dip, triple dip income, right? I just sold a house where I purchased the house as a rehab because I was a fix and flipper, right? And I sold the house and I was able to put somebody on my team that purchased or was the buyer's agent. Uh, so I was a listing agent, but they were the buyer's agent and they were on my team. So I triple dipped on that one, actually quadruple dipped because I also got profit share on that property and stock. Guys, that's insane to think how much money on one property. I think if I did them, I think I did do the math actually last week. So I'm about to, uh, we just closed on it. And I want to say on one transaction, I made like $65,000. That's not bad. You know, like that's so fun and it doesn't take any more time. It didn't take any more effort. It's just simply knowing something you didn't know. I know the game. I have Monopoly, right? I played it. We've played it. The people that are you're surrounding yourself with right now have played this game for a minute and we're good at it. The secret to success is by not keeping success a secret. We want to share this information with you. I'm not holding anything back. I want to share this knowledge with you because the more successful you are, the more successful we all can be. We're a team and I'm just happy to be here. And uh, I know that my husband's really excited to become or to show up next week. He's going to be teaching the five currencies. I'll just touch base real quick on that. And then I'm going to let you guys do your thing. Cause I know you got lots of things to do. Go make some monies. Right? So wealthy <laughs> mindset, investor agent, right? So five currencies. Now he's not an agent. He is just a super successful business man in general, right? He has multiple streams of income, uh, time, knowledge, relationships, credit, right? So we're going to go through most people, think about one way on how they structure their currencies in life. And he's going to talk a lot about time, knowledge, relationships, credit, and money. And then he's going to dive into the four pillars of wealth. And once you know you have the four pillars of wealth and you have them mastered, and that's what he's going to be diving into is mastering those four um, pillars of wealth, then you can solve anything. You can go and buy anything. You can go buy a 16 plex tomorrow if you wanted to not using your own money. You can do, I mean, anything you want, you can dream it, you can do it, just simply understanding the rules of Monopoly. Okay. So he's going to dive into that next week. So excited to be here. I love you all. Reach out to me. Uh, you know, Facebook me. I'm the investor agent. So find me. Thank you, Maylee. You are amazing. I love your energy. I, lo I think everybody here is probably a little bit more mo motivated than when we started. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. And we realize we don't know everything right <laughs> there's always something to learn i already ordered your book by the way or the one that you recommended yeah. hey, right there ready to yeah, get very good so, you know so be a doer that's a doer you know that so is. something great do it if someone that is better than you suggests to do something do it you know it's just go after it especially right now we have a, a lot more time some people have a lot more time on their hands to be able to read and get better and educate themselves, to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Cool guys, thanks for coming. I'm glad you all were here. We'll get those slides out to you. Um, super excited for next week. I mean, this should be on your calendar every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday at noon, you know we're at the same place every week. And uh, super appreciative to you, Maylee. Great content, great presentation. <laughs> thanks guys. Do we, okay. need, do we need more time than an hour? Next. Right? It's like, hey, let's just do a whole workshop. Well, we're going to, I know that, so uh, after this, I know that we we're going to maybe have a little powwow. So let me know if you, if you can jump back on a Zoom call or something and, and have a little powwow because I have some big stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. So, sweet. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, Maylay. Maylay, this is Eric. I just wanted to say that was amazing. Aw. Uh, if you, uh, you know, if you just wanted to train next week and just push Mitch a week back. <laughs> next week because that was fantastic part, part two right and i can't wait part two i i got a lot of trainings up my sleeve so. <laughs> keep on going i love it <laughs> Aww, that's really sweet of you well thank you i appreciate that <laughs> well right, i will say you will like his training just as much i, I can guarantee you that so it'll be good you can you can pull me back in the following week <laughs> <laughs> sounds good looking forward to it thanks guys thank you guys have a good day, day. bye okay see you